Hey you, I'm getting quite used to having you around. It's Lucy Luck, and I like to play non-traditional cozy games and make them cozy. In the depths of Worms Rock Fortress lies a legendary dragon. The legend of Anzor, Heart of the Gate, echoes through the streets of Baldur's Gate. But could this legend prove more than a mere fairy tale after all. Formerly a Baldurian ally, the dragon Ansvor is believed to await beneath the city, anticipating the return of a true hero. If the tales bear truth, this formidable dragon could be a crucial ally in the battle against the Absolute. To unravel the secret, of Ansor's whereabouts, we must delve into the pages of the legend of Ansor itself. So, without further ado, get comfy cozy, pop on some headphones if you like, and let's go on an adventure. The Legend of Ansor Baldur's Gate, Great Balduran's Birth Balduran found her due veneration, his guardian dragon Ansur, tremendous in worth, the savior below, our eternal elation, to worm way neath prison's deepest level, to be found by not a soul nor devil. With a lightning shock, a true hero's spark flickers, the torch is alight, and worm's eyes shall awake a glitter. Its trials no common adventure may exceed when each day sends forth new ones to their fates. But one great hero, by the Founder's will decreed, shall only once grant our age the heart of the gate. So, we have some rather direct clues that the dragon is below the prison of Worm's Rock Fortress. So our first step to head that way. I may have made a few people angry before this video. Okay, after using a healthy dose of reasoning, we can now make our way to the prison. Here goes nothing. Welp. Alright, we've made it to Worms Rock Prison, so now According to the book, we want to find torches that we can imbue with lightning. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say these giant dragon torches are our best bet. Now who has lightning attacks? I don't think I do. And I don't want to use one of Gale's stronger attacks just to so, we're going to use a Starion to shoot lightning arrows. <laughs> Why do I have so many arrows? I never used these, but I insist on keeping every single one of them. But it's times like this that it comes in handy, so I fully intend on sticking to my hoarding ways. do it. Okay, now I just need him to do this one more time, and I am absolutely destroying this potentially good loot here. Ooh, that's super cool. Okay, what loot am I destroying here? Just some sandals. All right, now what do we have? You telling me I could have just druided my way in here? I'm way too big. <laughs> I love how many ways you can go about certain things in this game. But I chose to be a paladin, so the hard way it is. What do we have here? Do I need this? Probably. 
probably not. See it? Ooh, I like these paintings. Wow, these are beautiful. Dragon. Did anyone watch Dragon Tales growing up? I loved that show. The statue before you bears a familiar likeness. It is Baldurin, the celebrated adventurer who founded the city of Baldur's Gate. Neat. Peril floods my province. The Palisades fall. The earth does tremble. The servants of shadow and blood assemble. Not neat. Beyond lies the grand worm, deep in slumber, awaiting a true hero's advent. Should my domain drown in torment? Be you the deluge, turn away. Be you the hero, answer true. Are you worthy? Poetic nonsense. There is no and no savior. Wow. The Emperor is a real buzzkill. Okay, I'm gonna say that I am worthy because I want to see the dragon. Ancient Ansor, hear me. A champion is proclaimed. The test begins. Let your judgment follow. Wait, there's going to be a test. I thought I just did the test. This is beautiful. Look at all the crystals. Streets, and I never knew this was under them. What other wonders have I missed? Always room for more. Always room for more. Absolutely. Yeah, I love these butterflies and the crystals down here. So what sort of tests do we have in store? Success. few doors. Okay. Which one should we go through first? I'm going to check this one out. What's in here? Okay. This chamber of Courage. That sounds like combat scenario, so we might save that one for later. Let's check out some of the other chambers in here. What's this one? Ooh, chess. So stoked. I'm glad I brought him because I do not know how to play chess. Okay, where's. Are you kidding me? Just jump, Will. Just jump. It's not that hard. Add a boy. Well done. Okay. This is giving me Harry Potter vibes. Prove your strategic wits. There is but one rule. The Dark King must fall in two moves. Are you a commander of armies? Or a shivering pawn? Fodder for cleverer minds. I'm afraid I have little experience with Lanceport, let alone the command of soldiers. I've been known to shuffle a few knights around in my day. Might I offer a suggestion? Please do. 
and also pay no mind to what I've done to Gale in this playthrough. First, threaten the Black King. Move your rook one square to the right. That leaves Black only two choices. Option one, the Black Bishop can take your rook. This leaves your queen free to move three squares to the right and checkmate Black's king, your knight pinning him down. Option two, Black's king retreats up and right. Your knight can then move two squares left and one up to mate the king, your rook preventing his escape. Oh, I'm gonna be honest, I... That all just went right over my head. <laughs> the Dark King must fall in two moves. A leader succeeds, a pretender fails. Oh gosh, why did I choose the chess one first? Highlight. I know that's the king. That's about all I know when it comes to chess. Okay. Can I push it? It says there's no rules. Or what do we have here? I'm still new to Paladin. I'm gonna try hitting it. Oh no, that didn't work. Okay. Oh. It's vulnerable to lightning. That's perfect. Okay. Starion. Do we want a Starion? To do another arrow. Okay. Let's hope this works. Where's my arrow? Cheese this. <laughs> oh no. Again. I think I have. Maybe one more move. I don't know. What to do? I'm gonna be so mad if I screw don't this up. Me. Anything but actually learn chess. This is this ought to work. May you always crush the wicked, be they pawn, knight, or monarch. Hell yeah. I'm so heckin' smart. Look at me. Yes. What's back here? Okay. Nothing, I think. Have a lot on my mind. I think we're done with that trial. hard part is getting everybody to jump back over this thing. Come on, guys. Oh, no. Will. Will again. You too, Astarian. Come on. Get real. I brought my strongest people for this journey. And they can't manage to jump. All right. I'm excited to see what other tests we have in store here. We know there's two. That seems like the main gate. I'm sure there's some others. I think each of these statues correspond with a trial of some sort, so. Ooh. It's like a fog. Oh, what's that guy? Looks like some sort of curse. A true champion knows justice and eliminates those who stand in its way. Restore the balance of justice. Justice. No pardon without repentance and no penalty without mercy. The right path often lies between the extremes. Sound advice. Mercy. Police. Justice should be a harsh lesson. All the better to deter the next vagabond. Why is he covered in blood? That's what I can't understand. Who am I talking to? Am I talking to Will or Astorian? Both. Okay. Relevant words for times of strife and for a dragon's underground trial, if we're lucky. 
thought I was talking to a historian. All right, so that's definitely a curse, I think. I got hurt. Try to remove that. I'm worried about walking into it. The dishonorable judge was banished, but judgment must still be passed. Okay. I thought that that was gonna be the whole trial, so. I'm glad that's not the case. The hanging. A red-haired man is depicted hanging from a gallows as a crowd looks on. You notice a child in the crowd, a falling tear leaving a trail on his cheek. Hmm. Sad. Freedom. A red-haired man walks the streets of Baldur's Gate, clad in a billowing cloak. You catch a glimpse of a sly smile beneath his hood, and a golden coin in his hand. A thief walks free. Is this truly justice? What did he do? The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red-haired man has a ten-day left to serve, judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. I see some more paintings on the wall over here, so I wonder if that'll give us more context. The apple. The painting depicts a red-haired man stealing a shiny apple from a cart in an open-air market. You know this market, the Wide, where Baldur's Gate citizens and visitors gather to conduct trade and wax political. Was that his crime? Did he steal an apple? Let's see. What else do we have here? The child. A red-haired man is portrayed with his cloak's hood lowered, giving an apple to a smiling urchin. A smiling Several urchin. other children are huddled behind the one receiving the apple, hands outstretched. Okay, so he stole an apple and he gave it to a child. That doesn't seem so bad. The induction. A red-haired man is depicted in hushed conversation with a dark-haired woman. She wears a cloak with an unusual symbol on it. Tally marks totaling the number nine. Ooh. So, I'm guessing that's associated with the nine fingers. So, perhaps he gets up to actual no good. The theft. A red-haired man is depicted in the Hall of Wonders, thieving what looks to be a priceless artifact. It's an astrolabe of entrapment. It could hold a dozen gin within it, perhaps even more. Oh boy. This is a really cool trial. I really like this concept. The chase. A red-haired man is depicted running through the city streets, a flaming fist officer chasing just behind. A cloaked woman, hair dark as a raven, looks on from a safe distance. Okay. Then one more painting. What's this? The Judgment. A stern judge, his pockets full of coin, orders a red-haired man to the gallows. A shiny apple rests on the ground nearby. So, we have somewhat of a balanced criminal. He didn't do anything that I believe were, is worth getting hung about. Probably shouldn't go free. The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red-haired man has a ten-day left to serve, judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. Okay. I think Will was correct in suggesting the middle road here. So, how do we pick this up? Can I just put that in my pocket? I can. I have magic pockets. And the 
this very skimpy dress. Okay. So we just gotta go into our inventory and grab the painting. I always forget that I have to drag it. Okay. You are a paragon of justice. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm ready to take the bar exam. My only experience is in art and ASMR, but after that encounter, I believe that I'm fully equipped. Ooh, what's this one? What a cool bridge. I'm glad that's a bridge, because it just said and I was worried I was about to fall right into that. What do we have here? Oh, I see some enemies. We'll tread lightly. Hello? Where's the statue? Everything's stone. No books in the books. Are those floating rocks? <laughs> A good leader has the insight to find good counsel. As a war reaches its end, there is one who doesn't advise for the city's prosperity. Find him, and strike him down. Okay. Well... I'm curious how this one's going to go. Ooh. It's a flying book. I feel like I'm going to need to those, perhaps. Unless I don't see too much in these. Is there anything in here? Let's check on the shelves. Here's something. Let's see. Journey through the jungle. The sun had just fallen below the horizon when I first started its call. A thousand raid pipes at once, whistling beautiful song, like whistling a single beautiful, terrible song. Ooh, the long set jaw is coming. Jaw dropped her packs and scurried up the nearest. Bite her. I don't know what that word is. I'm starting to get the feeling, though, that this book may not quite be what we're looking for. I think that we're going to have to flying books. And I don't know if you can hear, but my cat is snoring. And it's so cute, and I don't have the heart to wake her. So I hope you... <laughs> if you do hear it, you at least enjoy it, or get a kick out of it. So what are these guys down here? They okay, have different names. So I think we have to figure out bad one is through these floating books. So how do we stop them? Oh, this is gonna be tricky. Maybe if we go into time-based mode. take off, to have the chance to see a new generation take to these ideas of a better, kinder, fairer, intelligent world, and run with it to new reaches of the continent. Okay, I think the maps is probably good. They seem like a decent soul. What do we have here? Okay, this one says, Baldoran founds a city. This text roots its subject on Baldoran, a sailor of exquisite renown. I don't think that this one's relevant. Let's see, where's our next book that we need to catch? Okay, here's one. I'm going to go into time-based this time. So 
that it freezes perfect. Can I click on it? No, oh, okay. I'm gonna have to use the Alt command again. I love that the butterflies are still going, but the book is totally frozen. Okay, where is Alt? Perfect. There we go. Alright, we have... Oh, had to get out of time-based. Swaldo's Ethics of War. My colleague Maps proposes fair rules of engagement in times of war and forgiveness upon victory. Are we to spare our enemies, then, once they have fallen to our might? Are we to put all hatred behind us when surrender is offered? Indeed not. For what shall we do once our opponent gathers new armies and masses them? Once again, along our borders, we shall wage another war and count the lives snuffed out by our own mag magnanim magnanimity Magnanimity. <laughs> okay. This one's questionable. So we'll pick that one up. And get the last one here. And then probably review this one. Possibly reread that last one. So I'm not quite sure about that. The Virtues of Unions by Alwinstead. It is quite obvious that larger kingdoms offer benefits to all peoples within. As a kingdom grows, so does its fields, its populace, and its economy. A few charred corpses is a worthy sacrifice if a dragon offers to share its hoard after all. So too should you seek union, however imperfect, should a powerful kingdom march its army some friction is inevitable, of course. Citizens' rights might erode, for instance. Hmm, okay. That one's a little questionable as well. We'll pick it up. I'm between Stead and Swalto. What do you think? Is this one going to be helpful at all? It's laying out. The war was, in truth, nothing short of a tragedy. It began as a mild altercation. Between the sanguine sons of the Aleo and Vita families. No, I don't think. That one seems to have any of our names in there. Okay, let's go down and take a look at these guys. So in between Swelto and Stead. Um, I think I'm just going to double check some of these stories. Look at Swaldo's again. So, Swaldo, we know, has beef with a maps, or rather, a maps. Our most honorable leaders has beef with them. It seems like Swaldo has no respect for the concept of surrender, which is a little disconcerting. However, Stead's laissez faire approach to the suffering of the citizens is also disconcerting. Hmm. This is a tough one. I think, since the statue at the beginning mentioned one of the council doesn't advise for the city's prosperity, the choice would be Swelto, right? Swelto is more concerned with revenge rather than Prosperity. Just gonna see what a map said about Swaldo again. My old friend Swaldo comes to mind, who adopted such cruel ideologies later in life. I'll forever console myself in the idea that such a brilliant mind would only conceive such theories under the strain of exile, and the promise of reinstatement, as she ultimately was. So this, I believe, sort of reinforces the idea that Swelto's decision-making comes from a place of ego, perhaps, rather than the prosperity of the kingdom. So let's hope we're right. This has been a tricky one. But I really enjoy the questions.
requests that encourage contemplation like this. Awesome. Okay, we were right. So what do we have next? I believe there's just one more trial. That seems like going to be a combat one, but I thought that about this one too when I saw the enemies, so I could be wrong, but I can't imagine that there wouldn't be some sort of trial without combat, am I right? So, if I'm right, we are going to at least turn the volume down, that way we don't disturb anyone that might be sleeping. Okay, where is it? I think it was the Chamber of Courage, was it? This first door. I hate it when the door's in the way and you can't actually get through it without somehow closing the door entirely. Okay, Chamber of Courage. A champion burns bright, even when rushing waters and moaning winds threaten to extinguish the flames. Take the torch, withstand the elements, prove your courage. Okay, I'll take the torch. There's no going back now. I don't believe I've actually shown combat before in my gameplay, but hopefully... I replace the track with something a bit more relaxing and ambient, it'll be just fine. So we have some water and air elementals. It seems like we just need to survive four rounds. And I kind of like to see, even though I'm sure it's going to be more about survival, I want to see what sort of damage these Elementals are most susceptible to. Even though I'm fairly certain once they die, more will likely spawn in, but I could be wrong. Okay, starting with the Starion, I'm gonna just start blasting arrows. I know piercing isn't super strong against them, but this blows to a good amount of necrotic damage. Endgame Astarian is so strong. It's hard to believe so many people I know have killed him off in the beginning when they first meet him. Sure, he pulls a knife on you, but he's just sassy like that. Okay. Oh boy. I think we can use fire damage. Not bad. I don't use Will that often. I know he's a super strong player, but I typically like to have Shadowheart or Karlak. And I know those are two totally different sort of players, but I just really like Carlac socially. She comes in really handy in battle, but I just love her. I love all of the companions, really. They're all so great and well written. I have to remind myself they aren't real people and to chill out if I disappoint them. This is a tough game to play when you're a big people pleaser. I've been calling my first playthrough the people pleaser run. I was trying so hard to make everyone in my camp approve of everything I did. And that is not an easy feat. 
I do enjoy that the game really brought my attention to that, though. <laughs> I love that I was able to just do that. Just knock them off the edge. Now I kind of wish that all of my characters had some form of thunder wave. Oh well. But anyway, as I was saying, Sometimes video games can be really illuminating and helpful in some ways. Growing up, video games were always this guilty pleasure for me. I had this deep-seated belief that they were somehow bad or a waste of time. But the older I've gotten, the more appreciation I've developed for the benefits of gaming. Of course, that all depends on the type of game you're playing and how you play them. I definitely can't sit here and say that I game all wholesome all the time, though. There's a reason you don't see me play Elden Ring or Battle Royale games on here. Because that will bring out a side to me you don't want to see. Same with first-person shooters. I'm amazed how many ASMR gamers can make those so cozy. It seems like we're getting some tougher elementals already. But it shouldn't be a problem. Still have three more rounds to go. Let's see. Let's use this attack. Not bad. Not bad at all. Is there anything else? I'll just go next. I'm still getting accustomed to my paladin build. I'm used to being a wizard like Gale. I went with an oath of the ancients build, but ended up breaking my oath. I had no idea that was possible in this game, but So now, I'm an Oathbreaker Paladin, and I still don't know the best attacks, really. I mostly just spam Divine Smite, because it was the first one I used, and it's strong. Alright, so everyone's health is still pretty good, but it's probably in my team's best interest to use some sort of aura of protection. I do wish it covered more ground, though. But I think I have to get right up on my teammates. That or they have to stay close to me for it to work throughout battle. But I like to have my party spread out a bit so we aren't as susceptible to AoE attacks. There's nothing worse than having multiple players fall at once. It goes real downhill real fast. Alright. Only two more rounds to go. And we're in a pretty good position so far. Am I able to make it across? can't heal him with bite because they're not humanoid. That's okay. Boom, boom. Should I go on on him or I might spread it out a bit? There we go. Okay. Could have probably went all out on this guy. Didn't know he was gonna be that strong. Withering cut, though. Why not? Okay, and turn. Then I think I can probably use Thunder Wave once again for these guys. At least. 
paste again for the guy at the right. Beautiful. <laughs> but there's no issues doing that here because I don't really have any loot to worry about. I try not to use Thunder Wave on bigger bosses because they usually have really good loot that you can totally miss out on getting if you just throw them over the edge like that. Speaking of, I hear that you can now get Minthara doing a good playthrough with the patch 5 update. I'm really curious about that. I told myself I was going to do a full evil third time around. But now that I can get Minthara being good, it's a tough decision. I think I have to go evil next time, because I've already done full good and then chaotic neutral. So I should really switch it up, don't you think? It is amazing how many endings are possible in this game. I'm really not sure if I could get the same playthrough, even if I tried. I found so many new things this time around, and with the game continuing to get updates, I can only imagine that will be the case for my next run as well. I might have to go vanilla though, without mods. <laughs> They've sort of made my gameplay a little wonky at times. I think I've also missed some fairly important cutscenes. Okay, do we have any more enemies or are we done? Awesome. We did it. Okay, so that leaves just one more gate. I believe that was our last test. I think we just have the big door now. Okay, don't close that door. Go through the door. Go through the door. Wonderful. Okay. I do really like the design of this part of the map. Nope. Oh, it opened. Okay, I'm just going to short rest after. auto-saving. Hello. Hmm. Okay, it kind of made it seem like I could click on him, right? Okay. Did I miss some dialogue? I don't think so. See, this might be some of that mod wonkiness I was talking about. Okay, good night. Courage does the hero march, fettered by the taxing chains of fear. A stalwart soul must ever persevere. With insight does the hero choose. Guidance born of ancient wisdom proven. Peace, not strife, the undenied conclusion. With justice does the hero rule. Lead not the guiltless lamb to bloody slaughter. No, cleanse the lion's sins in sacred water. With strategy does the hero scheme. A cunning mind, a hundred steps ahead. Your allies close, your rivals stunned in dread. Worthy you are found. Go forth, hero. Seize your fate. And rise, great worm, heart of the gate. Cool poem. I don't think he was supposed to be doubled like that, but I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really like this content,
feel free to join the Comfy Cozy Club Discord. Sweet dreams, and I look forward to seeing you next time.